In a recent video of mine, I went over a few custom versions of Windows and ways to customize Windows yourself. And after seeing those options and seeing how performant they were and how interesting some of them really were, you just can't really get behind them 100%. You can't be sure that they're safe. And really the only way to make sure that the option that you're setting up for yourself is 100% safe is to customize Windows yourself. And the way to do that, the recommended way, is with an XML file or an unattend file. But you might say, Claudius, I don't know what an XML file is. I don't know how to code and I don't want to know. Well, that's totally understandable. I totally get it. So I'm going to show you guys a website where you can basically go through and click the checkboxes and choose the drop down menu options to set up an XML file yourself. You download it at the end and then you can open it up in Notepad and just do a double check like, hey, is it pointing to any, you know, web addresses or anything weird like that? And then confirm, no, it's not. And it's safe to use. Now you can, of course, do everything yourself. You could look up every single line for how to remove a feature or add something or uninstall some bloatware that comes default with Windows. You could totally do that. That is an option. But what I'm showing you is kind of the easy way to get yourself an XML file where you don't need to know how to kind of code with XML. So I'm going to show you guys two options here. I'm going to show you how to set it up on your computer, on your actual physical hardware, and I'm going to show you how to set it up on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. So let's get started. So first things first, we got to set up our XML file. So let's open our browser and we're searching for schneegans.de. Yeah, this is a German website. So S-C-H-N-E-E-G-A-N-S dot D-E. And here we are. This is the site. So you go down almost to the bottom here. It says generate auto unattend dot XML files for Windows 10 11. This is the one. So you click on this. And so here we are, this is the setup. So we go through here, uh, we start with our region and language settings. I'm gonna leave mine English, language is English, US keyboard layout. So I leave all of that. You can change that if you're in a different country, of course, and then continue. My home location is United States, so I leave that as well. We come down to processor architectures. We just make sure that we're on 64-bit, assuming that we are working on 64-bit. If you need 32-bit, or if you're trying to do something for ARM, then go ahead and choose that. If not, leave it 64-bit. Okay. Okay, so here's a big one. So setup settings, we can check this to bypass Windows 11 requirements check. So the check for TPM and secure boot. So this is a bypass for all of you guys with older hardware out there. This lets you install Windows 11 without these requirements, but obviously you're just sacrificing some security to do so. And then this one here is also big, allow Windows 11 to be installed without internet connection. We'll just go ahead and check that so that we don't have to set up with a Microsoft account. This one here, we're not using a distribution share, so this doesn't apply to us. And then this one next, hide any PowerShell windows during Windows setup. So this is nice because if you accidentally close one of those windows when it pops up, then it could screw up your setup. So just check this to hide those PowerShell windows to make sure that they can run normally and nothing gets screwed up on your setup. Now you can let Windows generate a name for you. It'll show you here kind of what the uh, format is for the generation. This is not what it will be exactly, but it will look something like this desktop hyphen and then this series of kind of letters and numbers. But you can also choose one yourself. So I will do that here. So this one's kind of interesting. Compact OS. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It compresses your core Windows files and can save you about 20% of the normal Windows kind of install size. It's really best for systems that have very limited resources, but you need to have a lot of RAM. And so if you are limited on your system resources, you might not have a lot of RAM. So in general, I would just say probably do not use Compact OS unless you have a very specific like you have a small drive, but you have like 16 gigs of RAM. It'll probably work for that. Now, just from past experience, Windows can be kind of wonky with the time zone setting for some reason. I don't know why. So I choose to set mine manually. Uh, you can leave it if you want, but I will set mine manually. So if you want a full auto unattend file, you could check this option, let Windows set up, wipe, partition, and format your drive, and you would set up everything here and have it ready to go. But it's so easy to partition the drive yourself in the installer that I really don't mind doing it, and I'm just gonna leave it that way. This one here depends on your situation. So if you have a generic product key or if you have a very specific product key, you would put that in here. Uh, I have one that's stored in my BIOS, so I select this option. And so here, just make sure that you're using the right version of Windows. So I'm using Windows 11 Home, so I have to make sure to set that one up. 
So here I just leave this one as default, let Windows Setup handle the Windows PE stage as usual. And again, this one kind of depends on your situation. If you want to have a separate admin account and a regular user account, you can do it that way. Or you can just delete this user here and only have the admin account as your main account if you're the only user. It's kind of up to you. And so I like to leave log on to the first administrator account created above selected here. And then when your install and setup is fully done and you're logged into Windows, just make sure you set up a password for your account. And my assumption here is that this is for personal machines, right? So password expiration, I just leave this at passwords do not expire. I use the default policy here for account lockout. And this file explorer tweaks here, this is kind of up to you. I like to show all files. I do end up messing around with hidden files once in a while. So this is good for me, but if you don't need to or want to mess with those, you can leave the use file explorer default setting here. This one here is for preference. I like the full bar here because it's similar to Windows 10. There's a full search bar down in the bottom left. So I'll leave this one. If you want a nice clean taskbar, you can select remove all icons here to have a nice clean taskbar. I like to disable widgets here so it gets rid of the news and weather. And then I also like to left align the taskbar in Windows 11 so it's more like Windows 10. I also hide the task view button from the taskbar. And I also like to select do not show Bing results when searching in the start menu or the search box because who wants to use Bing? This section is for Windows 10. We're not really covering Windows 10 here. This is for Windows 11. So if this applies to you, you can change that. So down here, I like the start menu to be very clean. So I remove all pins. So it kind of depends on your situation, I suppose. If you're doing like a lab setup or testing, you can disable this, but I would not recommend disabling Windows Defender or Windows Update or user account control or smart app control or the smart screen in Windows and Edge. But this one here, this one kind of depends on you. I disable fast startup because it means that no matter what, even when your computer is shut down, like it looks like it's fully shut down, it's not making any noise, there's still some of the system very minimal running in the background so that it can start up very fast, of course, like the name implies. And so this is just a little bit sketchy to me, like maybe, I don't know, Microsoft or some sort of services listening could be using my mic or camera or something in the background. It just doesn't make me feel comfortable, so I disable this. I enable long paths because it's annoying when I can't see the full path of things. I also like to click harden ACLs here, so it just makes it so that people can't create weird folders in the root C drive. I do run some PowerShell scripts, so I allow this. This one's big, so prevent Windows update from rebooting your computer. Yes, let's stop that. I'll reboot my computer when I want to, thank you. This one's also really nice. This is, you know, anti-bloatware stuff. Disable app suggestions, content delivery manager. So it prevents silent download and installation of suggested apps. Yeah, we don't need that, we don't want that. So if you want to use Edge and that first run, this little pop-up that always runs when you first open Edge for the first time, if that annoys you, you can select this to stop that from happening. This stops Edge from running in the background all the time, which is also good. And then this one here, it makes Edge uninstallable. And it says beta, but I've tested it and it does remove Edge. So very nice, very nice feature. I don't like to use Edge, so it's really nice to be able to uninstall it. This just gets rid of an old, unused, or empty folder, so no harm done there. Let's delete that. So this one's nice if you just like to be able to audit things or troubleshoot things really clearly. So it uh, just writes a new event to the security log anytime a new process is created. So visual effects here, if you have a very like low resource system or you just like your system to be super efficient, you can click adjust for best performance here. So this gets rid of like animations where you open your start menu and it smoothly slides out and smoothly slides back down or like transparency effects on windows that are unnecessary and use up a little bit of resources, not a lot at all, but it's still kind of nice if you have a very low resource system, as I said. Here you can choose what desktop icons are on your desktop. I use the default here, I don't really change it. This one's kind of nice, folders on start menu. So there's a lot of stuff here that shows up on your start menu by default. And you can change this, and I only show the settings because I like to have the settings easily available. And if this is a system that has a Wi-Fi card, you can set that up as well. Express settings here, we disable all. Windows will not send any data. We do not want to send Microsoft our data. 
We'll leave the lock key settings default here. I also leave the sticky key settings default, but you could change this if you don't like it. You can even change the color theme and everything. I don't really mess with that, but you can if you want. Now this one, this is the awesome part, right? For the people who hate the bloatware. So just select all, and this is everything that's going to be deleted from your Windows install. And the only ones that I leave, so it's, it just makes it easy to select all and then go back through and remove the few that I want to keep. So like, for example, I would keep the Xbox apps because I have some friends that use Xbox and I do a little, you know, cross play with them. I keep the notepad because I use it fairly often for actual, you know, notes or whatever, or for, for example, XML. If you want to use XML or learn how to code in XML or whatever, you use the notepad for that. You can deselect this to keep the snipping tool if you want to be able to take screenshots. I use GreenShot. It's a free tool for taking screenshots. And it's easy for me because you can use the print screen key for that. But uh, if you want to keep snipping tool, you can check this to deselect it to keep snipping tool. I also keep calculator and I also keep the PowerShell ISE, but that's just because I mess around with PowerShell a little bit. But yeah, this is basically what it would look like if you were going to de-bloat all of the built-in software that comes with Windows. And then we scroll way down and that is it. Our XML file is set up. You just click download XML file. Now we need to set up our USB for our physical install or our ISO for our VM install. So we need the Windows 11 media creation tool. So let's open our browser. You can just search Windows 11 download and just click on this first one here. And it's this one right here, create Windows 11 installation media. You just click download now. So it's right here in our downloads. We just right click on the media creation tool and we click run as administrator. So I'll do the ISO first. So we go accept. We use the recommended settings. So we leave this and we click next. We click ISO file here. We click next. And I'll just put it on my desktop to make it easy. So we go Windows 11 ISO and we click save. And now we just wait for it to download and create that ISO. Our ISO is done, so we click finish. And there it is on our desktop. So now we need another tool to open up our ISO and put the unattend file in there and then basically like seal it back up, if you will. So let's open our browser, search for AnyBurn. It's this one right here, AnyBurn.com. You click on that and you just click on free download right here. And it's this one on the top, AnyBurn free. We just download 64-bit edition. All right, so here in our downloads, AnyBurn setup, we right click and run as administrator. We click I agree, leave the default here and click install. We click next. We do not create a desktop icon. I don't anyway. I don't like all the clutter on my desktop. So I deselect that and then we click close. Okay, so here's the AnyBurn tool. So this is what we use to open up our ISO and put that on a 10 file in there. So we want this option right here, edit image file. We click on that. We select our ISO. It's right here on the desktop, Windows 11 ISO. We click that and open. And then we click next. And so here is our ISO. And so now we just click on add and it's right here on the desktop, our unattend file. We just click on that and click add. And then we click next. Let's give it a name. It's going to be on the desktop as well, but we will give it a different name. So we'll call it unattend and then just click create now and just wait for that to finish. And there it says creating image file finished successfully. So we know it's done. We click exit and here it is on our desktop. So I'm assuming you have VirtualBox installed for this, so I'm not gonna go through that. So we're here in VirtualBox. We're gonna go and create a new system. We'll just call it Windows 11 Unattend. Just make sure you pick the right ISO image here. So other, we go to desktop. It's the Windows 11 Unattend that we made and click open. And so we leave the rest here. We go to Unattend install. We don't change anything here. We go to hardware. Just make sure you give it at least four gigabytes of RAM. I like to give it eight because I have enough to do that, but uh, at least four gigabytes. And if you have the spare CPUs, give it at least four, in my opinion. You can give it less, but it just doesn't run as well. And then here I like to give it at least 50 gigabytes of hard drive space and then click finish. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back to creating the USB for the physical installs. And don't worry, after this point, the guide kind of converges and the setup is the same for both, whether you're doing the physical or the VM. So make sure you grab a USB that you don't mind losing everything on because this process will erase everything on that USB. So go ahead and plug in that USB now. So here we are, we're in our downloads. We right click on the media creation tool and we click run as administrator. So we click accept. We leave the recommended here and we click next. And this is where it differs. So now we're doing USB flash drive. We leave that selected and we click next. Just make sure if you have multiple flash drives, you pick the right one in this list. I only have one, so I leave it here and I click next. 
And now we just wait for our USB to be set up. The USB has been set up, so we can click finish. Hey guys, this is Claudius from the future here, and I actually forgot to show you a very important step for your USB. So we did get the ISO on there, but we also have to get the unattend file on there. Otherwise, it's not going to auto install with all of our settings. So we need to open a file explorer. We just go into our USB here. And just right here, right in the base folder here, right inside the USB, we drag our auto unattend file in there. And now the USB is good to go. Okay, so for the physical install people, just make sure that you look up your motherboard, the brand of your motherboard, and look up the boot menu key for your motherboard. So then make sure your computer is off, you plug in that flash drive that we just set up, when you turn the computer on, just be mashing that boot menu key to make sure that you get into your boot menu. And then you arrow key up and down to find your flash drive and select that by hitting enter. And then it'll boot into the setup installer. All right, setup is starting. So from this point on, it's the same for both. So you see it's skipping everything. It skips the EULA and everything. We go straight to the drive setup here. We just click create partition and click apply. And just make sure the larger one is selected here and click next and it goes straight into your Windows install. So just wait for this to complete. All right, so our install is done. Our taskbar looks very clean. We see that that worked as well. Let's open our start menu and see if those animations go and zero animations. So we see that that setting stuck, right? We see the username that we set up, there it is. We see that the options here are limited to just the settings button, just like we set up. Let's go ahead and open our settings. Let's go to apps, go to installed apps. And if we go to Microsoft Edge here, we should be able to, yes, we can uninstall. So we click uninstall again, and it really wants to make sure we wanna uninstall, we click yes. And one more time, it double checks, uninstall Microsoft Edge, uninstall. And there it goes, Microsoft Edge is gone. So that is actually working. We are able to uninstall Edge. And if we look at our apps, calculator, notepad, snipping tool, Xbox apps, these are things that we chose to keep and there's nothing else. So it re actually removed all of that bloatware. So there you go, our unattend install worked. Well, there you go, guys. That is the full and complete tutorial of mine on the unattend install for both physical hardware people and people installing on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope it was helpful. Hope somebody got something out of it out there. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it, what you liked about it, what you didn't, what I could improve upon in future videos. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.